Hi folks, welcome back. Today I will be doing a watercolor painting of a rose for you. Here's my palette, and most of the colors you can see there I have doubles of. That just helps me keep my colors clean uh, as I mix and as I paint. So the way I start is I just sketched out freehand. I sketched out the rose here on some sketchbook paper. And then the next step is I take a piece of tracing paper on top of that and I just refine my drawing and get my lines as clean as an, and, and as accurate as I can from the beginning. Uh, watercolor is less forgiving than oil paint, so I want that drawing to be as accurate as possible. So here I've got a pad of my 140 pound cold press arches watercolor paper. And what I'm gonna do is transfer the drawing to this paper uh, by using kind of a light box method. Now I don't have a light box, so I'm going to show you how you can do this method with, uh, you know, kind of whatever you have around you. So I center the drawing where I want it to be located on the painting. Uh, and so here it's actually uh, right side down. The, uh, the face of the flower is down because I'll be transferring it to the opposite side of the watercolor paper. So here this is kind of my makeshift light box uh, on a nice sunny day if you've got a big window or sliding glass door you can just tape your drawing up there and i have to share my workspace with my parents dog annie i'm still at home here but uh, that's okay she likes to bask in the sun so the sun is shining through the tracing paper and i can see the lines on that on the, uh, the front of my paper there so then I just go back over my, my drawing lines and lightly trace those onto the face of the watercolor paper. You can draw right on the watercolor paper, but um, I find that doing the drawing, correcting all my mistakes beforehand really helps protect the paper. If I do a lot of erasing and correcting and smudging on the face of the paper, it can get a little bit messy. Um, so here, this is my first wash. And I'm doing really thin, uh, thin mixtures of paint. So a lot of water, not quite as much paint. And I'm just getting some base colors down there for the painting. And then the next phase, I'm gonna go a little bit darker. Uh, and there's, a, there's about three or four stages here I go through. There's that initial light wash. And then now I'm just picking out some of those darker little colors. I like the lighter color roses for some reason. The, the red are classic, but um, I think the lighter color roses like white, yellow, or peach, the light really glows in those roses. It kind of shows through them. So here I have slowed it down a little bit. It's still time-lapse. Um, I did not have my masking fluid with me. Uh, so here I'm just having to be very careful and paint around any of those highlighted edges of the petals in the rose. Uh, I mentioned in the last watercolor video about the techniques, how that uh, it works best with watercolor to work lightest and then get darker gradually. And that's going to just help you kind of sneak up on your values. Um, sometimes I will put a very dark value down in the beginning just to set my range. But for the most part, I, uh, I prefer to work light and then gradually get darker. So here, just uh, popping in some of those darker tones. And it was interesting, after I did the first wash, I kind of thought, oh, maybe I made it too dark. But you can see from the, uh, the finished painting that it's actually still looking quite light on those highlight edges of the petals. And the watercolor does tend to dry a little bit lighter and usually a little bit more neutral looking. Uh, you can see a little bit of my palette on the right hand side there. And uh, as I started the painting, and you'll see through several sections throughout the painting, um, I, I spend quite a bit of time mixing up the paint before attacking the paper there. And I believe I mentioned that in the last watercolor technique video as well. Uh, that is really going to help you, especially if you've got a lot of little details like this. If you, uh, you know, if you try to mix up all those little subtle color changes as you go, uh, chances are, you know, it's going to dry before you get it in there, and so it's not going to blend right. 
So just, it's, it takes some discipline, but uh, try that out if you haven't done that before. Uh, try pre-mixing some of your colors for a certain area, and then uh, I think it'll go a lot quicker. It'll blend more the way you want it to when you put in those washes. Something nice about flowers like roses or uh, lilies or anything with those big individual petals, that to me is a little bit easier to paint than something like a hydrangea or a peonies where there's just dozens and dozens of petals. With flowers like this, you can really kind of section it off and just go one piece at a time. Uh, and this is kind of more my controlled method of watercolor painting. And there's a lot of different artists who work in, in various ways. Many of them will just prefer to work, you know, keep the paper wet the whole time. Uh, I'm letting it dry between stages here. If you have your blow dryer, that will help you speed things along. And that takes a lot of patience. I, I wasn't using a blow dryer here, um, but I, I made sure, like after that first wash, that it was completely dry before I started to go in with those darker mid-tones and shadows. Uh, because remember, if, you're, if your paint is wet, that's fine to put more paint on there. If it's dry, it's fine to put more paint on. But if it's at that uh, in-between stage where it's, it's just damp, it's not wet or dry, and you try to put new wet paint on there, you're probably going to lift up what you just put down. So uh, either get the blow dryer or uh, just kind of take a break, take a step away from your work, let it dry thoroughly, and then go back onto your, uh, on your painting with the next layers. This coming semester, some of my painting students, uh, you know who you are. Hello, everybody. You'll be starting uh, some watercolor painting. And so I try to I try to schedule my videos to be applicable to what my students are going to be working on. It doesn't always work out, but uh, hopefully after time, I'll have uh, kind of a nice library here. If any of my students uh, want to see some um, specific demonstrations for a technique or a medium, or anything like that. And I am just always thrilled to, uh, to hear people say, hey, I saw your video, uh, being home here in Illinois, going uh, back to my home church and getting to visit with friends and uh, you know, hearing them say, oh, hey, we watched your last video. So that, that's always really fun to hear. So thank you to everybody who watches these. I really appreciate your support. Um, and yeah, as, as usual, just let me know if you have any questions about anything or uh, if you want to put anything in the comments there. Here I'm just about done with the rose, just doing some refining. So basically I start with the sketch, then I go a light wash, let it dry, start getting darker, um, and, and then darker, 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 till I arrive at those final dark values that I want, like the deep shadows and everything. Um, you can do a lot of adjustment. One of the nice things after that first wash is that when you work section by section, you don't really have to stop and let it dry. You can just work on one section till it starts to dry. Let that dry, hop over to another petal, work on that. Uh, and then hop over to another petal so you can kind of work your way around the painting and I find that helps me make progress without having to stop and let things completely dry um, you know because one section can be drying while I'm working on a new section and then um, the photo I was working off of had a dark background and I thought that would be a nice touch to uh, to really set off those highlights on the rose here. So what I'm doing here, I'm just taking clear water and I pre-wet that background. You can kind of see this dark wash is bleeding out into that pre-wet area. So I pre-mixed my dark color. Uh, I, I pre-wet the background. That's going to help that wash flow a lot nicer. If you just go right on the dry paper, it might dry and you'll get kind of an edge or, or two that you don't like in there. And then here I'm just softening up a couple edges around the flower to give it a little bit of atmosphere and some final touches. And so there we have it. That's the finished rose in watercolor. So uh, thank you again so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I'll 
I'll see you all next week. Have a great day.